hey guys i welcome you all to my course and uh, this course is all about you know the tk inter module uh, in python oh wait wait it's not uh, you know so tough to pronounce uh, called uh, it, it may be pronounced as uh, kinter or tk inter or uh, uh, tinter that's your wish but that's a module in python uh, which will be used to create a graphical user interfaces okay uh, which will be very useful when you're actually creating an application in python or a uh, game in python a game kind of stuff in python okay the game the module can be used okay then this is a very interesting module which is available in python 3.7 okay and of, of course python 3 okay right so first of all what is a graphical user interface you know what do i mean by gui it's a graphical inter user interface right uh if i say graphical user interface it's nothing but you know uh and you know an interface or a dialog box or some stuff which is you uh, which makes the user easy to interact with the computer according to me okay uh, you can uh, easily uh, you know uh, instead of writing a code in the command command prompt you just press a button and that will do it for you okay it's very simple right I, i'll show you a graphical user interface an example for that yeah now this is a graphical user interface okay and uh, what this will do this will change the font of my uh, you know uh, of my information which is in the file so i have a notepad here in front of me i have a notepad and i have some uh, content there and i will talk about that later we have some content and uh, if you want to change the font i'll go to format and i'll just click font and uh, i'll get something like this right so this is called interface okay so graphical user interface gui and uh, because this has a drop down box and uh, again it has a four drop down boxes actually and this has a label and this is called a frame okay this is called a label and this is called a frame title that will be that will be doing no issues and uh, we have two buttons right so instead of writing a code that you know uh, uh, this should happen the user uh, feels so easy that i uh, if you click this button this will happen okay let us you know let us analyze this i'll change the font for example i like arial okay arial okay arial and i'll click okay let's see what happens okay so the fonts are now changed to arial okay so that's how you can just click a button just select and click a button that will do it for you okay so it makes the uh, work of the user very easy instead of writing program instead of giving commands i can i can interact with the computer i can just order the computer with just uh, you know just buttons and uh, drop down boxes right it sound good right so how to design your own graphical user interface sounds good yeah we are going to design a, a graphical user interface like this okay I hope I made it clear. I think I have to connect a charger. Yeah, guys. So, yeah, that's all about graphical user interfaces. So, let us talk about uh, the course content. Okay. So, this course actually requires some pre prerequisites. Okay. We can't avoid that. So, uh, you know, uh, this is a short term course. So, you have to uh, know the uh, you know basic. Uh, you have to know the basic things in Python. Basic stuff like list dictionary and uh, you know oop, oop is not actually uh, necessary and uh, i mean uh, for this course okay uh without oop you can follow that will be uh you know that would uh, make you understand something okay i'll, I'll also talk about oop uh, you know in between and if you want me to do a course on oop just uh, leave a, a when you are leaving a rating just uh, put a review that uh, oop, oop will be better so i'll do a course on oop okay object out means uh, object oriented programming so everything in python is an object i hope you know that okay so if you don't know it's it's not a problem that's what i'm trying to say and uh, you know we should know about file handling and uh, i know again that's not you know uh, if you don't know that that would be very fine okay if uh, but the basic knowledge on dictionary and list are uh, must here okay okay fine uh so prerequisites is the basic knowledge in python that's it uh, summary okay oops and file okay let us remove oops and files no i'll be teaching open file don't worry okay and you'll be able to follow okay even if you you know if you if you are uh, not good in python it's okay you'll be able to follow okay fine and you have uh, okay what it's in gui okay what uh, what is all about uh, gui a uh, gui what is gui contain a gui contains very simple thing it has a window and inside a window we have some widgets okay that's it and if you are you should know how to uh, handle those widgets inside a window and how to pack those uh, widgets inside the window and how to play uh, you know to be more precise how to place those uh, widgets inside the window okay so what what i'm talking about here is uh, yeah this is a window okay this is like a 
you know window a font window we have a title and we have some widgets here right we have a drop down list that's also a widget we have one widget here we have frame here that's also we have two buttons but also widgets and we have hyperlink that's also a widget okay so we have a lot of uh, widgets inside a window so uh, a gui a graphical user interface is all about widgets and window okay so that's it okay fine and yeah first of all you have to you have to create a window that means you have to declare a window and uh, using that uh, you know inside the window you have to place all your all your widgets okay depending upon your application fine that depends upon you you need one button or two button yeah so what are the widgets available in gui so we have a label we have button and we have entry and we have a lot more okay we have a lot and we, have, we can open images also we can uh, insert images also we have a lot in uh, uh, gui so timing i'm not talking um it's an it's just an introduction to gui if you don't know anything about GUI, this will be a great look for you okay fine so label button entry so we'll talk about more in the uh, course part okay fine and again we are going to create some projects okay it's not projects actually it's uh, programs i'll say okay applications okay okay first of all uh, okay when you uh, you know when you learn something new in programming you'll, you'll test it with hello world right so we are going to print you know hello world in a gui right and after that we'll uh, create a simple calculator because simple calculator is first step in gui okay we'll create a simple calculator uh, using gui and after that we'll uh, will be uh, uh, this is an inter interesting project I, I could say okay this is an interesting project because what i'm going to do is uh, this is a very good uh, you know uh, project uh, getting the information from the user like uh, you have a yeah, especially if you are uh, say for an example a person is working in a, a reception kind of thing okay and if he, his work or her work is to collect all the information about a particular individual right uh, name age uh, gender then blood group and all so and we have one more thing one more widget called a radio button <laughs> when i think about gender it comes to my mind okay fine so a radio button is nothing but uh, selecting one option okay we have four options select one that's that kind of stuff when you're filling forms in computer you might be knowing this okay so getting the information yeah, yeah, yeah fill form filling step okay just name roll number so not roll number uh, name age then gender blood group and all so you have to get all the information and uh, a user a user should enter all the information in the gui like in the window and if i press save it should automatically you know should be st uh, stored in a csv format okay when i say csv it's nothing but an excel sheet okay think like think of like an excel, excel sheet okay but it's actually not excel sheet but think like that okay when i say csv it's excel sheet okay. uh what i'm trying to say i'll okay i'll give an overview csv file or nothing but a comma separated file which there's a format right we have a lot of format uh, like text docs and excel sheet uh, excel, excel is excel sx and like that, like that we have formats right so it's a csv file when i say it's a comma separated file it's a format and what i'm going to say is when i say name each maybe what else what else i think it's gender like if i say like this you know if i if i insert the elements with a comma in between them okay if i insert the elements into the comma in between them then what it will do you know uh like uh this you know comma separated elements will be in a uh, you know will be in separate cells in excel okay again uh we'll create a csv file and we'll, uh, we'll create a csv file in notepad and uh, uh we'll check how it looks in how do it uh, how, do, how does it look in uh, excel okay fine so let me delete this for a while we don't need this actually so yeah yeah like getting the information you have, you have to press a button say na enter name uh, roll number that is age or uh, um, like a blood group kind of stuff and you press uh, press the enter button that will automatically uh, store the information in a csv file yeah so that is possible using python so automating our work using python instead of you are going to excel sheet you enter manually yeah of course here also you're getting going to enter manually but uh, python it automatically stores in a csv file right you are going to uh, you, you, need, you need not iterate over rows or columns okay it will automatically do it for you fine just uh, click put enter 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 click that's it enter name that's it enter name that enter name enter age put enter put save that's it okay just by clicking buttons it will do it for you okay and we'll get we'll give a great idea on this project later okay 
let's take a final project okay fine so let's work on GUI I hope you have made it clear it's all about widgets and windows okay for that I'm going to use an IDLE because I need an IDLE to write Python code right so I, I'm going to use uh, my notebook here okay I hope uh, uh, there is something called as the Jupyter IPython notebook okay Nothing but, uh, uh, you know, according to me, you know, what is a IPython notebook? If somebody asks, according to me, you know, uh, you are, Python is an interpreted language, right? It's an interpreted language, right? So, every line is, will be interpreted, okay? Every line will be interpreted. So, in a Jupyter IPython notebook, it will give separate cells for you to separate your code okay you can actually write your code in uh, in some of uh, you know in some boxes okay i'll show you i'll show you let's say jupyter okay you can install jupyter notebook by installing anaconda package okay just go to internet and search anaconda python and it will give you the package install that and jupyter will be uh, available in your computer okay again it will take some time to open because it will it will create a local host in uh, your browser in your default browser to create a local host and uh, yeah and it, it it will be having a particular directory yeah in your computer that is that will be in uh, i think it will be in c folder yeah in c drive so that uh, a particular directory will be having in your computer and uh, what whatever you are working in the jupyter ipython will be stored in that particular directory okay and we'll talk about that later fine and i'll create a new notebook so uh, press new here say python 3 because i'm working in python 3 now okay yeah. python 3 it's also possible in python 2 but i don't think uh, tk inter is available in python 2 i'm not sure uh, not sure but i hope okay so this is a jupyter ipython notebook okay so this is a notebook okay don't uh, you know if you are new to this you know don't feel bad it's very simple to work on okay this is a jupyter ipython notebook then if I press new uh, plus, uh, you can see there is a plus button here. If I press this, plus this, uh, this will create a lot of cells for me. And I can actually write code here. I can write functions here. I can write something here. I can write something, something like that. I can, uh, my uh, one, my 50 line code would be uh, written as 10 each, okay, in 10 cells, okay. This will be easy for us, right? Uh, when I have a function, a function may be defined in the cells. And after that, I have a, I have the execution after that like that you can separate it and it will be easy you makes code more readable okay and of course it is the it's a dynamic uh, kind of stuff okay fine so that's it it's all about uh, Jupyter IPython notebook then uh, I'll go to untitled rename the notebook actually I'll say this is a GUI one first project in GUI right so for GUI one okay you can give any name that's your wish fine okay so before that I'll, I'll, sh I'll just write a code in uh, here and I'll show you how this works okay I'll say, I'll say uh, let me add two numbers <laughs> yeah so a equals to input and b equals to input okay fine so they uh, okay I have to convert that to input, right? it's just to show how uh, this IPython notebook works okay if you, are, if you are a beginner actually and if you know already if you know it already just skip this for a while okay yeah so this that's so if you press enter it will create a new line for you you can actually type your code and again it will not be uh, interpreted until you press shift and enter okay if you press shift and enter simultaneously it will be uh, asking you it uh, then only by then it will be executed okay and once if it is executing it will be showing you an asterisk symbol okay please understand that uh, if you press enter it will direct you to only the next line of your code only if you press shift and enter or if you can also press run here that's also possible so if you press that uh, it shows something like executing right okay print forward, right if i press enter that will direct it to the next line it will ask me for the next line i have only one line in my code let's assume that and uh, i'll press shift and enter that will uh, say asterisk and if once if it is completely executed it will give you a number okay it will give you a, some number that you know that number denotes uh, when your program is actually executed you know 
right? Since it's getting input, it will it's getting confusing. I hope I will delete this for a while and say kernel go to kernel and restart and run all if you are stuck in something, okay? Okay, I have to wait for a while again. It will be user friendly and it is very easy to use. Like, yeah, it is getting printed as allowed. You can see we got a number here. So once it is executing, again, Python is something slower, right, when compared to C++ and Java. So once if it is executing, uh, it will show you a star, and uh, after it is executed, it will show you a number, okay? Fine. Well, that's how you can use the type Python notebook. Again, it's, uh, it's like normal ID, you know, no doubts, okay? Fine. So let us write our uh, first code in GUI, okay? For that, our uh, GUI, uh, what I told you is, GUI is all about widgets and window, right? So, uh, these widgets and window are available in a module called as tkinter, okay? So, let me import the tkinter module. Again, I, could, I should go to code here, markdown, that will create a heading for you. Think of uh, like, uh, writing your uh, titles in, uh, you, know, you know, black and your content in blue in your notebook, right? It's exactly like your notebook, okay? Fine. So, I can uh, write headings and I can write notes here. I can import pictures here. So, this makes Python more attractive, okay? So, importing inter module, TK inter module, okay? Okay. I think I have to put two hash symbols here. That's it, yeah? Press shift enter. Yeah, that's your topic, okay? That's your topic for the particular cell. Importing TK inter module. Fine. So, uh, let's import that. So, from TK inter import all the classes okay if i press you know asterisk here if i press asterisk or uh, like that symbol here that, me that means uh, from i can also import like this okay i can also import like import tk inter okay import tk inter that will import for us no doubts okay package but uh, if i say from tk inter import static like that uh, it will import all the classes that is available in tk inter okay so no need to declare it explicitly in, uh, you know, in your code, okay? So whenever you are importing TK inter, please use this. Whenever you are importing any module, you can use this, okay? From TK inter, import star. That means import all the classes, all the widgets, all the uh, windows that is available in TK inter, not window, all the widgets that is available in TK inter. So like this, import all the classes, import everything in TK inter, right? Okay, so that's why I'm saying it's, it's readable, right? From TK inter, import everything. So instead of having everything, I have an asterisk here. So asterisk indicates everything, okay? Import everything in TK inter. Fine. So that's my second execution, actually. First execution was hello world, right? Print hello world, okay? That's uh, that's not a problem. That's not an issue. So I have imported TK module here. Okay, that will work. And the next, would be, next step would be... Okay, next step would be... What's my next step? I am have to create an object, okay, and a window object, okay. This is so simple. I'll explain it why. Please wait, okay. So I've imported Tinker, uh, you know, module that will import all the classes available in uh, TK Inter, and I have to create an object of the class, okay, class called TK. So I have a constructor called I have a class called TK inside. So in, I'm importing everything, right? So it will import everything okay it will import some some random classes from all the classes available in tk inter in that i have a class called tk okay i have a class called tk that is actually used to create your window object i hope i made clear so from tk inter you are having a lot of classes so you, you, you are going to use a particular class called tk and if you're very familiar with oop this is simple for you right so you're going to import a particular class called TK and I'm going to create a window object, right? So how will you create an object in Python? It's very simple. So I'll say uh, object is nothing but an instance, okay? We are, we are creating an instance, uh, we are instantiating the class. Again, if you're, uh, if you're not familiar with Oop, you can go back and watch my uh, Java you know, course uh, that I've discussed everything about uh, Oop, okay? Again, it's, you know, Oop, is, Oop works, uh, you know, very similar in all the programming languages. There are some differences, but uh, you know, that, a great understanding will lift you to learn open all the programming languages okay fine a window object so 
how to create an object okay so i'll say the object name I'll, I'll name it anything okay let me name it as window itself okay so let it's not confusing okay so window tk that's it okay so your object equals to class name constructor right class is class and constructor are almost similar okay and again i'm not talking about that here time being object equals to class okay that's time being let's say class for a better understanding it's actually a constructor but better understanding let's say it as class okay so that's how you create an object okay so window is an object of tk now so you can throw to your program now you can use your window object okay so the first step would be in importing the tk inter module the next step would be creating an object of a class in tk inter module called as tk understand every step okay so that window object now can be used anywhere in your program and again execute that it is not executed you can see uh, a space here yeah, it shows no, it shows no error. It is successfully created. So you have an object called window. That's your window object. And throughout your program, you have to use the window object. Okay. Fine. That's it. So TK is a class. I've created an object of TK class again. I'm saying for understanding. Okay. Let me have a, na a label. Okay. Let me print hello world. So label label widget. Okay. So how to create a label widget in Tinker? Okay. Again, for label widget, we may have a class. So we have to create an object of a label also. So lab I, I can create, uh, I can name the label as my label. Hey, wait, what are this? So I can name the label as my label. Okay, that's your wish because that's your object, right? So my label. Um, so label class. Okay, that's how we create an object of label class. Okay, so whenever you are creating an object of class in Python, I hope uh, you know create an object of class in Python. You have to mention the class name uh, with an uh, round base here. That's actually a constructor. Okay, okay. Con uh, think of that if you know don't know think of the constructor and class are almost similar. Okay. And you, you can create n number of objects for a class, right? So button is a class in Python and you can create n number of buttons in your uh, GUI like that. Uh, label is a class which is available in TK inter module. We have already imported the module. Okay, we have already imported all the class. See the asterisk sign which means we have imported all the classes available in TK inter. So you can actually create objects of those particular classes, right? So label is a class. You can create as many number of objects for label. So my label one, okay. Same class name, like it. You can create my label two, the same class name, okay. So class name is label that is inbuilt, and object name is your wish, okay. Fine. But uh, it's you know it's it would make sense to have only one window, okay. Fine. So can uh, that's okay. Let's not talk about that now. So, importing every class is creating objects of classes. Okay, again, if you're familiar with this loop, uh, with familiar with loop, this would be simple for you, right? Fine. So, my label, say my label, label, right? Inside label, I have to pass arguments, right? So, uh, assume that uh, you know, understand that this constructor needs some arguments to be passed. Okay. Again, this doesn't, uh, this doesn't need, but this constructor, you know, has some arguments to be passed. Okay. Again. Okay, in, in inbuilt library, it asked me some arguments. Okay, I know. Okay, for that, first of all, I have to whenever I'm creating any widget, I have to pass my window. Okay, I have to say in which window it has to be presented, right? So I have an window object here. I have a window object here. So I have to pass that first. Okay, remember this. Whenever you're creating any object, take it any object, right? Button, label, or entry, you have to uh, pass the window first. Okay, you have to create an object of window and you have to pass that first. Fine text equals to uh, I have a position argument called as text so I can pass that if I say text equals to text equals to hello world okay you print that and I have something called as I have something called as font argument where you can change the font of the uh, text and I have a lot of arguments and we are not talking uh, timing let's talk about the later okay and if you want to know what the, what are the arguments here, all are optional arguments, okay? But window is compulsory. Uh, everything everything else is optional. Position like it's called positional argument or uh, I think arbitrary arguments in Python. Yeah. 
fine if you want uh, if you want to know what are the arguments that is taking you can go to internet and you can search here label function in python not function label class right or label in gui python that will search and that will uh, you know what is the argument that is take it is taking okay again i think it shows here yeah it takes something here side and all yeah it takes root yeah root is first your uh, see here this here so root is first your root is nothing but your uh, window so instead of uh, we are having window here okay we are having window because i created the object as window but you can have uh, create if you create the uh, instead of if you are uh, writing root here and you have to pass the root here right again that's your wish mostly programmers go for window root or master okay so whenever you are reading any code in gui understand that mostly programmers go for uh, na naming the object as window or uh, root or master okay like we can justify that is for on which it has to be present if you say tk left it will be justified to tk left I'll, I'll show you i'll show you wait and you can give your text and you can give padding i'll talk about padding later so fine fine okay so we have imported the module we have created the window object inside i uh, we have uh, created a widget okay created a widget but now the fourth important step very important step guys inserting my widget in the window inserting my widgets in the window okay again just for your uh, interpretation i am uh, writing uh, Reading size is actually not necessary. Okay, so inserting my widgets in the window. So I have my window object here. I have my, uh, I know, uh, my uh, lab my label object here. That is my, my widget. So I have to insert this widget in inside my window. Okay, that, that then only it will show for me, right? Fine, clear, right? So that that will be my first step. Inserting my widgets in the window. So how to insert my widget? It's actually pretty simple. Okay. It's actually pretty simple again. Okay, so I would say uh, my label. We have two functions actually. Dot pack. That's it. Okay. Dot pack, and we have one more function called grid. Okay. When I say pack, uh, when I say pack, uh, if you, if you have only one widget, if you have only one widget, you can uh, simply say it as pack. Okay. Why? Because when I say pack, it will pack the whole area. Okay. It will occupy the whole window. Okay. I have only one widget here, so it is okay for me to uh, okay for me if it is occupying the whole window but if i have a lot of widgets like button one button two then i have to use my grid function okay because i have to align them okay i have to align them in my window we'll talk about that later fine let me let me run this and okay before running yeah i have done everything then i have to uh i know call my uh you know call me uh gui right so calling my gui that means executing everything like right? this is final step final step okay execute this in final step okay execute everything okay this is important then only it will open a gui for you otherwise it will not Fine. we have five steps totally execute everything so execute everything means it's very simple uh, again go for your window object okay in python how you how you will access a particular method which is present inside a class again it's again hoop right uh, uh, now you have a class here you inside uh, inside the class you have a method so how will you access you have to use the object of the class to access that particular method right again i'm making sense i hope you have to use the object of the particular class to access the method which is available inside the class right so i have a method inside the uh, tk uh, class tk class i have a method inside the tk class called as main loop okay I have a method in the called as main loop, and uh, I am using an object of TK class to access this main uh, method, right? So this is called object method encapsulation. Okay, so that's how it works. If you want to access a method in a particular class, uh, you know, if you want to access a method which is present in a particular class, then you have to act. You have to create an object of the class. Then using that object, you have to access the method. Fine. And again, we have something called as static methods in Java, not in Python, but static methods in Java, where you don't need to create an object of the class. Okay, you don't need to create an instance of the class. You can directly instantiate the class. You can directly uh, call the method using the class name itself. That's available in Java, but not here. Again, in Python also, it's maybe possible. I, okay, that's not our topic. Okay, fine. 
window dot main loop. If I press window dot main loop, you need, no need to run the code. It will be uh, yeah. This is my GUI programming, right? Fine. Again, I think uh, this is my graphical user interface. Okay, I have a logo and then it's my yeah. I have only one label, right? So it occupies the whole space. Okay, so I have only one label here. Hello world, because I'm printing hello world here. I'll change this for a while. I'll say hey and mask just to uh, make you make some things interesting. I'll again I'll just execute this cell alone. There are no no need to execute everything, right? So. The, that's why IPython notebook is cool. Just execute this cell alone. After this, execute your main loop. That's it. You and a reminder that everything uh, uh, you know, every time you want to execute a cell, if you want to execute a cell, just press shift and enter that will execute a cell. Okay. I mean cell. It has to be changed now. I don't know why. Yes. Yeah, it it is not all executed. It shows wait, you know. It shows some asterisk symbol. So we have to wait, I hope. I've closed the command guys because it takes a lot of time. So let me re okay, no problem. Let me run all. Let me restart the kernel and run everything. Yeah. You got the window. Yeah, it says hey I am mask. Okay. So like this, it works. And again. Uh, so we have five step in uh, if you want to work in GUI this five main core steps the first step would be importing the TK inter module next step would be uh, creating a window object after that create your label of not your label only create any widget okay it's not you know it's not necessary to create like, as many you can create as many number of objects and as many type of objects okay uh, as long as it's available in Python library okay so widgets uh, so next fourth step would be inserting my widgets in the window right using this pack and uh, fifth execute everything that's your fine that should be a final step okay fine this is a basic understanding on gui and again this is no uh, this is not uh, necessary to give it in a separate line i can give it here itself here itself i can say dot pack that's it okay that will do for us and it is not necessary but you know most of the code will be doing it in uh, separately okay let, let it be I'll just comment this line because we need this uh, notebook. I'll upload this in the course. I think it's restarting now, right? I, this will work, no, no doubts. Again, yeah, you have a GUI here. Yeah, it, this it works okay. So, yeah, that's how it works. So in our uh, okay welcome back guys so let's uh, you know let's create uh, you know a simple calculator okay let's say how to get two numbers from the user and how to send the uh, answer okay in uh, using this uh, GUI you can create an interface that will add two numbers okay that's it okay we are going to follow this five mantra or five steps again so let me create a new notebook okay so that I can save this and give you no, 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 no. okay fine Okay, I'll, I'll upload both. I'll upload both IPython. Yeah, if you save this notebook, it will be an extension called as .ipymb. That's IPython notebook file. Okay, you can open it only in IPython notebook. Okay, if you open this, it, it should it will be looking something like this. And if you want, I can uh, I know I can save it as Python file also. You go to this file, download as and uh, click download as, save it as IPython .py extension file. IPython sorry Python file. Okay, you can I, I'll upload that also. It's your wish you can use both. Fine. Okay, first step would be importing TK inter module. I'll just copy this. Fine. I'll just copy this. I'm not going to put right and all. After that, creating a window object, I'll, I'll, I'll just make it in the same cell. Okay. Yeah. Plus shift enter. And okay, we have successfully imported all the classes. And using a class called TK, we have an um, object here. Say window. Okay, TK is an inbuilt class again. Fine. That's it. So we are going to create an now, uh, now interface, right? So okay, let me create widgets here. So button. Okay, let me leave some space so that I can write functions. I'll I'll tell you what is functions. Button one. Not button. It's uh, entry entry field, right? So what is an entry field? You know, entry field will get uh, you know inputs from the user. You can, user can actually type in the entry field. Okay, entry entry field. 
So I'll get two numbers. My my project my uh, GUI interface would be uh, getting two numbers from the user and printing that. That's it. Okay, fine. Uh, not getting two numbers and adding that and printing printing the result. Okay, fine. Okay, so what are the widgets I need? So I need uh, basically two labels. Say enter number one, enter number two. For that I have to uh, I have to have two uh, labels, right? So I'll say label. Label is nothing but it will show. Okay, it will show something like hello world. Label. I'll say label one. Label one equals to again. Label one is an object. Create a class. Uh, create, sorry, create an object of the class label. Okay. So label is my class and label one is object. Just a reminder. So first step would be passing the window. I told you right. So passing the window. Okay. It shows where where it should be created. That's why passing the window and text would be enter the first number or enter number one. Number one means not the number one. Actually, uh, enter a number right. The first number. I mean. I okay. Then uh, after this, let me say label two. Again, we have a lot of uh, designing, uh, you know, designing parameters there called as font size and all. I'm not talking about that. Usually, I'm weak in design. Okay, text equals to uh, enter number two. Fine. Okay, so we have. What we are doing here is we are just creating two objects which belong to a particular class called as label, and inside this we are passing window and uh, two uh, two text. Okay, how how this would look like? You know, just press enter. Okay, and okay, I I have to have lot of objects here called button and all, but let us check how it look like. Okay, next step would be packing these in my window, right? So I've created a window. I have created labels and we have to pack these labels in the window. Okay, inside the window, right? So label one. Again, I told you that I'm not going to use pack pack method here because pack will pack everything. Okay, I mean uh, this, uh, this uh, particular uh, uh, widget say label one will occupy everything in our screen. So there will be no space for label two. Okay, let me okay let me use one more function called grid that will share the screen. Okay, grid grid. So grid method inside this. I have to mention which row and which column. Please uh, remember this. So I have two important parameters called as row and column. So uh, again, everything is a row and column in uh, in uh, when we uh, talk about interface here. Okay. So yeah, let me give an idea of that. Okay. Consider. Let's consider that. Uh, okay. Imagine this interface. Okay. This is an interface in uh, Notepad. Imagine this as Uh, in terms of rows and columns, okay. So uh, that's title. Leave the title for a while. Okay, I'll create a title here. Uh, I'll show you how to create. That's simple. Okay, and this is your first row. Okay, this is your first row. Or uh, uh, when I say first, it's actually your uh, zero row. Okay, actually uh, in Python, it's zero base index. Okay, so everything starts from zero. It's not one. So this is your zero row. Okay, font, font style, and size. That is your zero row. Okay. So zero row, you have three columns, right? So you see one column, two column, and three column because you have three elements. So consider, uh, think that of you are having three columns, okay? So you having the zero row, you have three elements, so you have three columns, okay? So in a uh, first row, that is Arial, Arrow Bold, and Twenty. Again, you have three uh, uh, elements in the uh, second first row, okay? So zero row and first row, that's so. Uh, rows and columns work in uh, grid. Okay, so if I say place my label in row zero, column zero, that will place my label here because this is row zero and column zero, right? Okay, uh, actually column also starts from zero. Okay, uh, if I say place my uh, label in uh, row zero and column two. Okay, row zero and column two means row zero is my first row, so it will go to first row. And column two, column two means uh, column zero, column one, and column two. Place it here, okay? Like this, we can place. Okay, again, I'll uh, we'll play with this uh, in Python notebook. Don't don't worry if you are not understanding. This, yeah, let me say row zero, right? Row row zero and uh, column column zero. That's it. Column zero and label two. Auto grid function. Let me say the grid method. Let me say the row, row one, column zero because that would occupy the second row, right? Understand? So enter number one. I'll say a colon just for safe space for understanding. 
so enter number label one is enter number one that will be in uh, your first row okay zero uh, zero row again zero column because we have one element so it doesn't make uh, any sense we have we have one two two three columns okay so label two will be placed in first row that is the second row actually i'm not confusing if i say second row it's actually a first row in python because it starts from zero okay let me run this code and check because before running i have to uh, execute like this right say i have to use my window object i have to go for main loop function okay because your interface should work right if you are creating an application you should work you know uh, it should work continuously okay whenever you press the button you have to get the output right that's why we are having a loop here okay whenever you have to uh, whenever you are pressing a button you have to ask to work okay right again uh, if you are someone who are uh, familiar in electronics, okay, you are uh, familiar in designing uh, the software for embedded systems kind of stuff, you might have very familiar with this, right? Uh, you, you may be writing, say for example, you are working in Arduino, you may be writing a code in a loop function, okay, because we want our Arduino to execute the program continuously, okay, not continuously. Whenever I give an input, it should give, an, give me an output, okay? Whenever I give an input, it should give me an output, like that, okay, it should work for us, that's it. And, Placing inside a loop, let us restart and run. Okay, and you can see we got two labels, and we don't have any text and uh, text entries and buttons. We didn't create it, uh, we didn't create it to create those yet. So we have enter number one, enter number two. You can see it is placed in zero and placed in uh, row one. Row zero, enter number one, that is label one, and row one, it is enter number two, uh, label two, right? And I uh, let me check. I can place those in the same row, okay? Row zero, row uh, zero, and uh, let's say column one, okay? So both will be placed in same row now, uh, row zero, and uh, label one will be placed in column zero, and label two will be placed in column one. Let us check. That means consecutively they should be placed, okay? When I say label one, it is the enter number one. Label two is enter number two. Yeah. We can check in the same column we can have column zero it is occupied by label one and column one it is occupied by label two that's it but we do uh, it will not suit our application so let us say uh, row one and column zero that would make sense you might have guessed what we are going to okay let me close this fine okay let me create two entry okay two entry box to get inputs from the user so entry one say entry window yeah, it was window, right? So window text. No, text is not necessary. Let's say window, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Entry two. And I'll talk about padding now. Wait. So entry two. And again, you pass the window. Right? So again, uh, you, you have to grid the uh, window. So I, I should have enter number one. And after that, I should have some space for user to enter. Okay. You might have guessed. Okay. So I'll say. What I'm having, what I'm going to have this, and if I enter number one, and after that, uh, that is that should be an entry space here. That should be an entry space. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, that should be space here for user to enter. So this is my label, uh, and this is my, right, this is my entry space, right? So entry field okay so label entry field you might have guessed that these are in the same row and the column zero is occupied by label one and column uh, one is occupied by the entry space fine column one means second column right so again it's it should occupy the first row but the uh, second column that means column one fine because column starts from zero right so entry one uh, dot grid again should occupy the first row that means second row <laughs> i'm not confused with this sorry and uh, fine okay that's it i hope let's check okay cannot okay oh, no problem i restart because we have closed the uh we have closed the uh interface that's why it says application has been destroyed no problem yeah cool right enter number one i can enter any number here i can enter also any number here cool right but i have to press a button that button should execute right okay fine uh row you can see row zero column zero row one uh row zero column zero row, row zero column one actually this is row one column zero again row one column one okay so two entry labels and two uh two entry uh two entry labels and two lab uh two entries and two labels actually sorry 
we'll solve for uh, this problem. So two entries and two labels. Fine. Yeah. After that, I have to create a button. Uh, if I press the button, that will that should add two numbers and print the result, right? So button. Uh, I should have one more label, it seems, to print the result. Uh, let me have an entry, right? It that will be uh, so result. Okay. Let me name it as a result, so it will be more meaningful. So result entry. So that window. Right. Fine. Again, I should create a button. So button. I'll say button. I'll name the button as add. Uh, that will, you can give uh, any name there that's usually to code that's it that will not be shown in your uh, screen okay whatever you are giving inside their text will be shown in your screen not this okay that's that's for your understanding to code creating an object right so add and uh, i'll create a button button so button class inside uh, first of all i have to pass the window okay so after that i'll have the button name called as add so okay fine okay the, after that i'll grid the button here i'll grid the button so add dot grid say row one equals to uh, one row one equals to say uh, row two that's the uh, third row right uh, your button should be after all these okay third row and the column say zero for a while because we you're going to have only one button no? I'll tell you how to place this in the center. Okay, no problem. Fine. So run all. Again, you can see we got a button here. And if you press that, nothing will happen because we have, we haven't written any code for that. So we have button, 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 right? This okay, button. And I want this button to be placed uh, in center. What what should I do? You know, you should go and write as column span. Okay, we should have a uh, you can have an argument called column span. Actually, you are having an argument inside this class, and you can actually use that argument column span, and you can pass something. All, all these are optional arguments, okay? And you can uh, you can you have to specify how many columns are actually available to, right? Because I am creating two columns, so because zero and one are the two columns available, two maximum columns, right? So I am having column span two, and again I'll show you how how this will look like. Before that, you know, let me increase the size of the button for a while, okay? For that, I have to call. I uh, use the argument uh, to go to this uh, button uh, constructor and I have to use my uh, argument called as pad x. Okay, padding in x axis. Okay, like mean uh, when I say button in x axis and y axis, a rectangular box, right? So, a rectangular box. So, this is your x, uh, it's your length of the box, and this is your breadth, right? So, you have to adjust the length and breadth here. That's pad x and pad y. Okay, so you can actually pass two arguments called as pad x and pad y that will adjust the length. Okay, sounds good. So pad x and uh, I can give any size. I think it's uh, the units will be in dp, dp or uh, sp. I don't know. So 20 and we have something called as padding is very similar if you are working in Android, right? If, if you are basically if you are a guy who, who is an Android programmer, padding is very simple. You have the, you would have done a lot of paddings, okay? So pad x and pad y, which means adjusting the length and breadth of the button, okay? Adjusting the length and breadth of the okay. Let's see how it looks like. time think yeah ah yeah oh my god you, you can see uh, because of this column span argument we had the button in the center okay that that is fine but something this is fishy that is so big right so you can actually uh, I think uh, uh, the length is okay that is 20 is okay but 20 uh, you know you are actually making a square, right? When I say 20 into 20, that's a square, okay? Length and breadth are of same size, okay? So it will create a square for you. So fine, let me have breadth, I know, in a very small value. Okay, I say 10. Fine. That's it. I hope that's it. That's it. Uh, that's how it works. After that, fine. If I press the button, nothing will happen, okay? Again, I didn't run the code, so if I press the button, nothing will happen. So I have to include the uh, function. So I have to call a function say def say name uh, just name the function as sum or you can give any name sum as a keyword in the okay can use that no problem sum then uh, yeah sum right and i have to get the input from the entries right so i have two entries here so here i have one entry called as entry one and i have one another entry called as entry two i am calling them as entry one and entry two i have to get in inputs from those right so i'll say entry one dot get 
So I have a method in entry. Uh, I have a method in entry class. I have a method in entry class called as get. Using the object of the entry class, I can actually access that, right? That's it. Very simple. Get method, right? So again, uh, if, I think if you press tab, you will get all the methods available. It's not working. Sorry. So get fine. And entry to again, I'll use the get method to get the input that is actually entered by the user. Okay. So I'll store this in two variables. That's it. Okay. I'll store this in two variables. This is a function executes. Okay. And I'll add those two. That's it. That will add two numbers. That's it. After that, I'm I'm gonna print that. So I'll store I'll store this in some other variable. Say C. Okay. I have to print that in one more uh, entry box, right? So I have one more entry box called the result. I haven't added it into our window. You can see we got uh, no grids for uh, result. We'll add that soon. Don't worry. But understand that I'm gonna print. I'm gonna print the result that is uh, addition of two numbers in the in the uh, result uh, entry box, right? So I'll say entry dot uh, again. That's the result object. So result. That's my object. That's my object of uh, the entry class here. Where I'm desiring to uh, print the result, right? So result dot result dot I say insert, okay? Insert insert will take two arguments. First thing, okay? Will take two arguments. First one is your um, first one will be your uh, I think the first one will be your index, okay? So I'll say uh, insert first one will be your index. Again, second one will be your value. That's the actual value or uh, trying to uh, insert okay so uh, time being let us take it as zero don't worry let us take it as zero okay uh, let's start from index so index always start from zero right so uh, i'm gonna place something in the zeroth index okay that will make sense i'm gonna place c okay i'm gonna place c that's the result of the addition of two numbers fine well, yeah, okay you are getting uh, two uh, inputs from the entries using the get function adding those two and you are inserting in some other in entry that is named as result all right for time being else not time for not con confusing you because uh okay so i'll say it as entry three first okay so i'm getting inputs from two entries and i'll adding those and i am inserting them i'm inserting that in the third entry that is third field okay fine but i haven't added grid for the third field i have to do that so entry three okay let me say result should be in somewhere uh, Something below, so I'll say it should be in gray, uh, row three, okay, and it should be in column zero, okay, and it should be occupy the whole whole column, okay, it'll be column span two. That's it. Block by the whole column, like the button occupied here, okay. Fine. Uh, zero and C. Understand? If you press one, that will leave a space for the zeroth index and will uh, insert a value in one. If you press if you press two, that will leave space for two index two values, okay. That's it. Fine. Let me run this code again. That's a problem. We have created a function, but this function should be executed whenever I press the button. Okay. So I have a button here that. Uh, so I have to. Uh, whenever I press this button, say add, this function should be executed, right? So for that, I have to use the argument called command. Okay. You have to use the argument called command, and you have to mention the function name alone, not the round braces okay and again this will confuse you okay you have you should not mention the round braces you have to mention the function name alone okay remember okay because if you mention the round braces okay this will automatically call the function even if you have not if you are not pressing the button okay i'll i'll show you okay it will automatically call the function when i say uh, function uh, automatically call the function if, even if you are not pressing the button okay just pass the function name alone that's it this is something different okay because Whenever you worked in Python, you will uh, call the. If you want to call the function name, you'll say only like this, right? You'll say only some. Put the curly braces, okay? Put the round braces actually. But uh, here you are not mentioning any parentheses. This is something different, okay? If you mention the parentheses, then it will call the function even if you are not pressing the button. So, but we don't want that, right? We want only the function to be executed whenever you are pressing the button, right? Fine. I run this. Check what happens. Again, we have to wait. I have to, uh, we have to wait. Yeah, it opened. Yeah, you can see we got something, right? So enter two numbers here again. 
uh, use uh, you can use uh, you can also use pad x and pad y for uh, number one number two also i'll show you 10 20 i'll enter two numbers let's add 10 20 oh my god hmm again uh get actually returns a string i seems it seems to it returns a string no problem okay so convert it as an integer because it returns something as string so if you add th those two then it will be uh, concatenated okay not added like uh, what we have shown here 10 20 run this again okay so here we have uh, dialog box sorry our interface so 10 i 20 and these two yeah 30 fine so that's so it works again uh, i'll say I'll, uh, let's try with 20 30 and it should be 50 right we'll see what happens here right so uh, before uh, you are uh, you know uh, you have to have one more button called as clear button that should actually clear the uh, that should actually clear the uh, entries okay otherwise it will uh, you know it will concatenate uh, consecutively if i say 50 plus 80 that's uh, uh, 130 right so check what happens 130 will be added like this okay so you have to clear the uh, entry fine so we have to clear one we have to uh, uh, put one more button called as clear uh, right window text and sorry clear right so clear again have to have the same uh, padding i think it looks something good a uh, good padding i hope so let, let us have the same padding for all right like 20 and 10 fine so for the label also fine so that i could copy fine in field yeah it's better to like this uh, so that uh, will be like a, a, a bigger screen okay so if you increase the padding the screen uh, window would get bigger okay again you you have a function called as window geometry yeah you can mention like this here window dot geometry okay inside this you can actually spec specify the size of the window say for an example if you want 120 into 120, uh, 720 pixel window you can actually mention like this this is possible uh, let us not let us do it later okay come on this and uh, Pad and uh, yeah, uh, we have a pad and so something uh, we will uh, we are magnifying the things that's it okay just for a clear view fine then yeah for clear button I have to write a function right so uh, let me say command equals to I have to mention the function name I have not created it, the function yet but I will say command is equal to clear fine not uh, i'll mention something delete everything so delete function right so delete now i'm going to define the function okay because if you run this code it will show you wait uh, let, let me show, will show you what you know it will show you uh, sorry it will show you delete is not at all defined okay let me run this code here okay i think we maybe got getting it so delete is not defined so let me define delete function here so delete okay that that will if i press this clear button the clear button will call the delete function so the delete function should have the instructions to delete everything in the entry field right so that's pretty simple plus entry one entry one you have a method you have a method called as delete so use that delete uh, and you have to and it also takes two arguments okay and delete also takes two arguments starting index and ending index okay starting is zero and ending you have to mention as end okay so it will delete everything in the index okay so it's zero and end and should be in ca should be capitalized i hope so end that's it and again i'll copy this fine so entry two entry three okay so that's it okay so delete everything in uh, entry one and delete everything in entry two and delete everything in entry three whenever i call i press the button i click the button clear it should delete all the entries fine that's it and again i have to grip that here i have to grip the clear button here i mean i have to place the clear button in my uh, window so i have to place this in my row three and column zero okay 
row 3 and column i think it's it should be near to the add add button right so add button is my uh, is in my uh, row 2 so i'll have the uh, play button on in the same row itself so column 1 column 1 and remove the column span because we have one more uh, element here so remove the column span because uh, when i say column span uh, i am informing the add button that i don't have any other element i don't have any other button so occupy the whole column but i have one more uh, button here which is which is going to be in uh, which is going to be a neighbor for this add button that's why i am removing this column span okay i hope you understood fine because when i say column span it will occupy the whole column but here add button should not occupy the whole column fine because i have play button which is going to be in, uh, which is going to be to write of the add button show some error unknown paddocks well man show some unknown option paddocks but here entry field entry field as i think it is uh it doesn't have paddocks so i think i hope it is ipadx internal for entry field alone it is ipadx and ipad which means internal padding i hope fine let me run this code again i do, i'm not sure but let's run this code again i'm interested more in programming than, than designing yeah it's, it's not working so for entry field we don't have this i hope yeah i think i don't have a padding for entry field so i but no problem i have one more uh, argument called as width that link is the width of the entry field. So, uh, let's say 35 no now usually we go for 30 okay all the programmers okay so 30 right so i'll clear all these entry paddings paddings are only available for button it seems yeah whatever so width it will be 30 and you can you can uh, at least study the documentation which is available if you say go to internet search tinker documentation or tk hinter documentation you'll get all the uh, uh you know details there so with 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 okay with third and i have one more uh you know uh argument called as border with okay is it recording hello yeah i have one more about which is uh that should be very uh, small value that's actually with of your border okay uh you see uh yeah uh, you every button has a uh, border right so width of your border uh that should increase the thickness of the width okay so that should be uh, in a very small number say five for usually you go for five five again five. that's it okay it should be equal to sign here so that's it so yeah i hope it should work now let it let me rename the notebook first say this is addition gui fine let us run this now oh my god mm -hmm. sounds good but uh, here uh, there is a gap that's a problem here uh, what's the problem add row to column 0 add column 1 entry 3 occupies So what I can do is I can change the column span here. Okay. So let me run this code again. Again, you can you can have something called as a left uh, left just, just and pass an argument called justify and you can uh, uh, put it all in left side and right side and all. Okay. And th those are all design parameters. You can go and study those. No, not typical. I'm talking about programming here. So yeah, something it's less. Okay. Then let's leave this for a while and I'll enter numbers at 10. 20 and print 30 okay i i press clear button it will clear all the uh, fields because when i press clear button when i press clear button it will call a function called as delete and inside this delete function i, I have defined the delete function, user defined function so i am deleting everything again this delete is different from this okay i'll say this is delete one and say this is clearing okay function name clearing So, so that you will not be confused this delete is different that, that's an inbuilt method that is available in uh, uh, entry so clearing will be called so 
direct this is inbuilt method available in entry one so that will be all the delete everything from zero to that's it okay that do the same for all the entries that means three entries entry one uh, entry two then entry three right that's it that's how it works hey guys we are halfway through the course i think uh, in the previous modules we have seen how to write a simple uh, gui in python okay graphical user interface in python okay so in this uh, you know video let's uh, see how to create uh, you know a project like getting information from the user and storing it in a csv file okay let us come as a separate file okay fine before that i'll create a new notebook first so that i i could work there and i have one more project idea time if time permits i'll tell the about so okay that's also a simple project fine those are all very simple projects of course fine and uh, i'll change the name as uh, uh or how could i name the project for the name is form filling right form filling kind of our uh, data entry right like we say data entry uh, of course data entry has a lot of meanings here and something else so data entry right so before that let me tell you how to you know how to create a csv file and how to uh, you know how to add data to the particular file okay that's pretty good simple right let's say import csv right of course to create a csv file we don't need to import the csv file but if a uh, csv module if you want to write something into a csv file then we have to import this module right this particular module so because we have some tools there that will allow us to write something into a csv file using python code okay okay uh, will will be uh, you know will be familiar to you in a few minutes okay so import csv after that i'll uh, okay let me okay i have imported the csv module it's a module available in python okay fine after that uh, let me create the field names which means uh, the topics actually the you know the topics of the column yeah i'll say name fine i'll say name i'll say age and i'll say uh, what i can say blood group okay yeah those are the basic details here okay let me say contact number fine it's optional you can use any anything but let's say contact okay that's that, that seems good so that, those are your field names okay and uh, again you have just created a list of field names you are have not inserted into a csv file we have to do that before that we have to create a file right we have to create a csv file and that can be done very simple in a very simple manner that if you say file equals to if you say file equals to open we have to use the open command and again it's not the command present in csv module it, it's present in the uh, and you know default python 3.7 okay open means it will create a file for you it doesn't know what is uh, you know it doesn't know uh, whether you are asking to create a text file or csv file you have to mention that okay so i'll you have to mention the file name here again you have to mention the directory also but you know uh, this uh, ipython notebook jupyter has a specific directory for it uh, it will be in c folder if you install this uh, jupyter notebook in your computer also you will be getting a specific directory and uh, that will be in uh, i think uh, let me open it and show it for you yeah it will be in uh, c folder i hope yeah c drive go to c drive and you go to users and search a username my username is ma suj so it will be in this folder right i have already a lot of files there so that will be in that folder right so just mention the file name alone it will uh, it will store that in that particular directory okay so my file name would be let's say my first file okay my first file dot csv yeah you have to mention the extension also so that it will create a csv file for you and you have to uh, you know mention the mode of operation you know that if you are familiar in file uh, file uh, you know and file handling then you may be knowing this okay you have to mention the file operation also you know if you mention r then you are intending the file for reading okay just to read data from the file but here we are creating the file and we are going to write something into the file right so uh let me say w okay i don't have any file called my first file there uh, if i if i ask to open the file okay if uh, it searches for this file on the directory unfortunately i don't have this file there okay i'm intending to create the file that's all. uh you know what it will do if, do for you know uh, since you have mentioned it as a writing uh this will 
create a file for you right create a new file for you if you don't have that file in the particular directory understandable right if you have that file it will open the file for you fine my file open so this will create a file for you it's because the file is not present right create a csv file comma separated file super right then after that uh, you know again csv that right so uh, that i think uh, you have to use some uh, specific uh, you know uh, methods and objects to uh, write something into a csv file okay again it's very simple okay not, not so typical i'll say uh, csv dot writer okay in uh, uh, i think it's uh, yeah it's correct i hope the writer okay let's try let's try because see in inside the csv module we have a class called as a writer so we have to create an instance of the class I, I think we have to create an object of the class my object name would be a writer okay so that's my name that's optional uh, not, not optional that's you know i could get any name to that okay so time being i'm saying i say writer and i am creating an object of the class writer which belongs to csv module okay Does this work yeah i think writer uh, okay we have to pass the file okay you have to pass the file name so file because my file object will now referring to my file so i have to pass that okay then only it will know uh, which file you are intending to write okay so that will okay that will work so if i say now i have to you know write now that's all i have to write now so writer i'll say writer i'll say uh, uh, inside uh, you know writer is now object please remember this so uh, for this class for this constructor writer constructor i am creating an object say writer fine so uh, both are different you see uh, w is uh, small letter now and w is capitalized here so both are different okay this is my object okay so throughout my program i can now use the, use that particular object to access particular methods okay fine so i'm creating an object of a class which is available in csv okay so why i am mentioning csv dot you know because uh, then only it will know if you don't want to mention you have to import like this from from csv import everything right then it will import all the classes for you so so that you can uh, you can oh, avoid the csv yeah it works yeah super right so yes okay so if you are just importing csv then you have to mention that you know which module it belongs to because you can import as number of modules right if you import everything from csv then no need to mention csv or you can directly use the class name sounds good fine okay so write uh, writer is equal to write a file okay fine then uh, writer dot write row okay we have two uh, methods actually i'll actually we'll talk about that okay so using this writer object i'm calling a method say write row and write row will i'll now pass the field names fine okay so field names are this i have to pass that so that it will create you know i have to pass it as a list again i i, I should uh, pass it as a json object like list or uh, i think uh, a json object like list or dictionary so both will be accepted okay so i am passing it as a list okay you know what is json model right fine okay so field names i think uh, it's time for me it, uh, i think it will be uh, written okay it will be written so i I'll just close the file now file dot close it's optional but you have to close the file for okay let me go to the directory and open the file and see whether it has written or not hey guys i have located the file and you can see we got the uh, output there we have written something in our excel sheets uh, again i told you that csv is something like excel sheet but you know how it works you know you just uh, right click and uh, uh, open with uh, notepad so we'll check how it works yeah so you can see all the elements are separated by commas okay you can see comma here name comma age comma right so that's why it is called as comma separated file okay uh, you just put everything in comma like sujit and we say it here but uh, uh, don't worry, I'm, not, I, I'm not going to save it okay comma 19 comma contact number is something some random number so you know now this will be uh, you know uh, occupied in separate columns okay each comma will be act as a separator that's why it is called as comma separated files okay sounds good right so it's very easy to write csp files fine okay let it be again go back to your uh, jupyter i'll close this otherwise it will throw me in error no don't save okay don't save this okay it's recording yeah fine 
the file flows yeah, that's how you write uh, some how you write something into your csv file again you have to get your inputs and uh, you just use the write row method to write something I, I can use one more method called as write rows okay so that will write you know a lot of rows for you right one or more rows okay we'll, we'll use that method okay so what i'm going to do is so i'm, I'm going to save this file as csv file csv intro so that you will be able to use it csv intro right and i'll create one more file again you can pass it as a dictionary also that has a separate method okay dict writer if you want i can teach you but you know it's more than enough to know list, list alone we have both give the same output okay new notebook python 3 okay now i am actually going to write my project here okay this is just an intro of csv again it will take time it will create a local host for you okay there's the port number 8888 okay port i think uh, first of all let me import csv uh, that has to be imported and uh, let me okay uh, i'll say from uh, csv import everything okay import asterisk uh, from dk inter import everything because we are working in dk inter right so that's it okay so let me create an create objects of particular classes i mean imported the modules I, i'm gonna use some classes if we create objects of that i'm gonna use window you know that window of tk so tk class window okay that will be created and after that i'm gonna use something called as uh, you know okay i'll talk about csv later let me create our uh, interface first okay i'll talk about csv later okay so window tk and after that i uh, I just leave some spaces for me to write some functions. Okay, I'll write in the fourth column. Say I'll create some buttons and text. Okay, what? How you should? How you should look like? You know, you, you should have name label, age label, then contact number. Then you should have three entry boxes for uh, for user to enter uh, name, age, and contact number. After that, you you should have a button which uh, user should press. If the user presses that button, then automatically it should save the file. Right? It should add. Okay. So let's have only two buttons, okay? Time being uh, save, exit, and uh, clear. Okay, I'll teach you what is exit button here. It should work. Fine. So what what I'm going to have is I'm going to have three labels. That is name, age, and contact number. I'm going to have three uh, button save, exit, and clear. I'm going to have uh, three entry fields. Fine. And I'm going to have same padding for all these three. Okay, I'm just going to copy paste the padding structure. Fine. Maybe I could uh, copy this. I'll create uh, some markdown. Leave some space here. That's it. Okay. Fine. The labels, the buttons, and the entry fields. All that's me, right? So first label one. I'll name it as name. Okay. So that okay. Label one itself. Okay. Label one. Because we are not going to use the label. Okay. Just I'm going to print something. That's it. So you you have to uh, instantiate the label class. And you have to pass your window argument first. You know, you know that, okay? Then you have to print the text as name, and just put a colon and put a space. That's so that the user will be able to understand that. Okay? I hope. Okay, that's it. You have create, already created some labels here, right? So padding uh, has been given. So here also let's give some paddings. What's the padding? So note, uh, you know, stick to a uh, stick uh, specific padding, okay? Okay, so uh, when you use to it, uh, you, uh, please uh, stick to a specific pad and yeah, just copy this. Copy this. Label to uh, here it is age, right? So age. So label means it will just print something. That's it. I think label three. It is. You should have contact number. Contact. Let me say contact. Okay, I mean. Fine, and I'm gonna grid this in, uh, you know, in that file, right? I can also grid here, but uh, that will confuse me a lot. So um, I'll grid, uh, grid it separately. I'll just call this. That's it. I'll grid it here. So grid. I think it's label dot one dot grid. Always the good practice to grid it separately. Okay. Row zero. Okay. Row zero. First row should be occupied by label one. I think a title should be given. Right, I'll give my title here again. I have to tell you how to give the title, right? It's very simple again. So, say window dot you have title method. So, title you can give anything inside title. 
write uh, my data entry our oh, data entry. data entry app something some kind of stuff you can give any data okay i change this notebook name also fine mm, grid zero and uh, it should occupy column zero also right that's it i'll just copy this here, paste it here for label two and label three. Okay, so I just edit this as label three and label two and label three. I just uh, I should occupy the first row and it should occupy the second row. Fine, we have only labels now. So let me run this code and check it out. It's a good practice and run this code several times. Okay, even when you are creating it, that will I know that will give an idea of how the uh, DUI issue will look like. Okay, we start and run all. I think you have an unnecessary braces here, right? Yeah, only for the EOS. End of line, or end of file actually, EOS. And uh, we just created some labels, we have not yet uh, imported our CSV file yet, okay? Yeah, it works. So you have some labels here, right? So. Uh, in the right hand side, you, sh you should have some entry fields and um, you know below that under the, underneath you have some buttons, okay? You should have some buttons. So create my entry fields now. You know, please increase the play playback speed when I'm typing if you're familiar with this, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll name the entries, okay? That will be uh, very important. So I'll name the first entry as name so that it will uh, it will be easy for me to uh, you know, use it in my another functions, okay? Name, I'll say uh, entry. Entry. It should belong to my entry class. So entry window text. Uh, no, not text. Right. It's just an entry field. So I have. Uh, I don't have paddings here. You know that we have only width. So width should be equal to. Uh, I told you usually we fix with 30. So 30 border width also there. Thickness of the border that is 5. And I, again, I'll copy this. Paste it here. Paste it here. And this is for age. And this is for contact number. Okay. Again, I'll copy this. I'll now uh, grid my name, age, and contact number in my screen. Okay. Wait, I'll do. I'm gonna change it. So I'm gonna change it as name. And this is going to occupy the zero row, but first column, because it should come. You know, we have a label called name, right? And it should come. You know, next to it, right? It should come next to it. So. Uh, if this should, uh, name entry should occupy the first first row, but it should occupy the second column. Okay, so that's why zero column, zeroth column, and first first column, right? I mean zeroth column and uh, okay. Let me fix with uh, one convention. If I say zero, uh, if I say first, it it means zero, row zero. Okay, so that is first row and second column because first row, first column is occupied by the label. Okay, I hope you understand. Name. Row one, column one. Okay, and again it's column row two. It's a uh, no doubts, but it is column one, right? And this contact, right? That's my third entry. So let's check how it looks like. No, no, I have to close this file. I think I have I have closed that interface also. Sorry, sorry for wasting your time. Sorry. So yeah, it should open now. Yeah, it opened. Has opened. So you can see we got three entries which is consigned to the name, age, and contact. Sounds good. Fine. So we 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 got the title also data entry right because of this title method. Okay, so. We are uh, using window object that is a window basically that represents a window and uh, we are giving the title. Okay, that works fine. After that, let's okay. Yeah, now we can add the buttons. Okay, buttons also. So buttons mean when you say button one. Okay, I'll name the button. Okay, I'll say the save button. Save button will be button class. Pass the window. Text will be uh, they should say add or save. Okay, save button okay fine save and it should have a width of no no width right that's padding so i'll give the padding from this 
if you want to know uh, you know what arguments does the uh, cla uh, class constructor actually take like button actually take you can go and you can search uh, uh, you can go and you can search for that you can see the documentation and seeing the documentation will help you greater and again i have to complete the course within two hours that's it that's fine i'm not i'm not going to deeper part of that okay say button window text table padding right so that's uh, button so i'll i'll say add uh let me have uh, one more button say okay we have four buttons here let us have four buttons because uh i'll have to add every field in my uh you know in uh in my uh comma separated file i have to add every data after that if i give save uh that will save uh at last that will save everything okay fine so i should have four buttons add then save then clear then exit okay i hope you understood so window and i can just copy this right and it is add button right so it is actually yeah it is add button fine uh, let me copy this again paste it here this would be after add button you have clear button right so clear Fine. After that, you should have one more method called as you know one more button called as exit. Uh, button. Copy this. Paste this here. So this would be exit. And you can write the function here itself, right? To exit something. Okay. Uh, give the commands. Uh, you know that if you if you want to call any function as long as the uh, you know as soon as the button is pressed or button is clicked then you have to give the command function right the inside command argument you have to pass your function but i already have an inbuilt function there called as window dot quit okay so that will do for me right so if i press this exit button uh, this command will be executed that's window dot quit that will go for a particular function that will quit this i don't want to define that function okay that's inbuilt in window object right that's a method and again you have to you don't have to uh, specify the braces there uh, because when I say function, you have to specify, but here you don't have to, okay? Because uh, you know that will be executed even if you are not clicking the button, okay? So you that that's not desired, right? You want it to be executed only if the button is clicked. That's why. Fine. Okay, that's it. I think I can add that in my grid. I'll just copy this and I'll delete. Okay. We can increase the play playback speed. So I'll say save button. You know that should occupy the last row right so third row column zero or uh, first uh, the, let us uh, let it occupy the fourth row i'll occupy i'll make add the first button okay add save clear exit okay find column zero and again put column span two so that it will occupy the central space okay and here add but uh, h h will be occupying the third row okay I mean, uh, before save, I'll say column zero and uh, column span two. I'll just copy this. Not age, I think it's uh, add. Sorry, sorry for confusing you. Sorry, I'm I'm really sorry for confusing you. Okay, so it's uh, actually clear. Clear is clear should occupy the fifth row, and that's it. And after that, you have exit that should occupy the last row, which means uh, sixth row, or I mean seventh row, whatever. Okay, row number six, <laughs> column zero and column span two. Fine. Uh, now let, let me run this code and check. And nothing will happen if you click the button because only if you, uh, exit button will work because for that also we have for that only we have provided the comments only exit button will work. Nothing will happen to the rest. I think it, uh, GUI should come now. Yeah, it has come. I hope. Yeah, see for an example, you got a four buttons here, and you see clear button is something uh, bigger, some something uh, the uh, length is bigger when compared to these. So you can reduce the padding also. Like you can go and you can reduce it as nine. Okay. After the, when the next execution becomes, uh, sorry, its y-axis is correct. I think its uh, length should be adjusted. Right, length is something more. So you can adjust the length here, say uh, eighteen or nineteen. Okay, that will work fine. That will fit. So you can give a name here. You can give age here. Age, okay. Uh, it's thirteen. Fine. You can give contact number here. And if I press add, it should add that to a CSV file. That's it. Okay. 
okay fine and if i press save and it should save everything that's it okay find mm, clear means should clear everything for that also you have to write the function nothing will happen if you clear now because uh, we have not written any function so if you press exit uh, the program will stop okay fine so i think uh, we have to write uh, it's high time we have to write functions uh, for the buttons before that let me import the csv model i think i have imported that no problem so yeah first of all we write the function for clear okay clear uh, clear button because it's it will be very easy to write for clear button right is it recording hello yes so clear equals not clear so it's, i mean command equals i have to name the function okay let me name the function as clear itself with the capital c okay i'm using small c here so let me say capital c okay fine so i'll first declare the clear function here so def clear you know how to declare right if clear button is uh, clear function is called then it should delete everything in the entry field so you have one entry field say name uh, that will delete or uh, delete is an inbuilt method available so from zero to n okay you know that uh, you have seen this before just copy this okay and i'll paste it here name age contacts okay so that's it if you click the clear button now this will call the command clear and that will delete everything right fine okay just execute with uh, by pressing shift enter you can execute this that's it and uh, i mean uh, you can uh, you know you can add this to your program that's it if you, only if you call that will be executed right only if you press the clear button that will be executed you know uh, you know that let me so add something for add button also so command fine so what i'm going to uh, basically do is i'm going to get all the inputs uh, please remember this i'm going to get all the inputs say add if i press add i'm going to i'm going to get all the inputs in a list okay so mm -hmm. if i press oh, say for an example my name is sujit sujit uh, age 19 contact number some random 10 numbers that will be one list okay and after that i press uh, clear and i enter other data say for example john he same is 19 and uh, his contact number is some random numbers and that will be stored in another list okay but this list, list should be combined okay fine this list should be combined and it should be look uh, it should be uh, get, got as a single list for example uh, what i'm going to tell say is for uh, okay this is a, this, this is a, just a command okay i mean comment okay fine okay let me leave this for a while okay so just I, i think it's uh, in python it is this right yeah Uh, I should put the okay. Wait, sorry. Yeah, I'll say Sujit. Fine, Sujit. Uh, I'll uh, that's a string, right? Okay, timing. Let's please uh, please don't mind. Nineteen. Then I'll take ten contact number. Okay, contact number. That's it. Fine. And after that, uh, I'll have one more list. Fine. Okay. Uh, you should have uh, n number of list. Okay, it depends upon the user actually. How many data you are entering? So mask. I'll say his age is uh, 25, and uh, is, that's it. And you have to uh, put these two lists in a single list. Okay, okay, that's it. Uh, that's it. You have to put the separate places, right? So it's actually nested list, list inside list. Okay, you should you have you have to get the data like that, and I'll I'll teach you how to get data. So okay, fine. So you can uh, you have to have a uh, you know large outer list think of like a bag inside bag you can have a lot of books right so in say library you have a lot of books think of a library so you should have an outer list inside this you have the list as a separate data like name okay name john again age 27 let me say in numbers like this you can have n number of list inside a separate list so we have you should deal with two list actually outer list and the inner list inner list can be anything okay i mean uh, in any number so this is one data this is another data this is another data and this should occupy the separate rows okay this should occupy the uh, one row and this should occupy one row this should occupy one row that's it that's what i'm trying to say for doing this uh, let me have this comment for the for our understanding okay so def and this should be done when the add button is clicked right so add i have to okay i'll add command i'll say add Okay, let me not confuse with the uh, this add. Okay, let me say capital A D D because when I say add, that is button name is also add, right? It doesn't make sense. Okay, add. Fine. Uh, 
I'll create a list. Say list equals to uh, LST. I'll say LST because LST is a keyword in Python. Okay, LST. That's a list. And I'll create an empty list actually. Uh, I'll say I'll call it as main list. Okay. Fine. I'll call it as main list. That will do for me. Main main list. Super. Then. Uh, okay. So main list. Fine. But uh, I think it's uh, very very good. Uh, I think it's another good practice to add a main list in uh, you know outside the function block. So if I you know if I declare this um, if you create a main list inside this block, say add, and this will be specific only to that block. Okay, only to add block. But I don't want it actually. I want my function to be access. I want my uh, I know main list to be accessible by another uh, button also. Like you know uh, I have save button right. I have your save button right. That should also access. I'm gonna write the function in future. That should also access uh, main list, right? Okay. If I create main list inside this add block, and this will be accessible only to this add block, right? So I'll remove this and I'll uh, declare main list here. Main list means that is my outer list, okay? That is going to contain the inner list like this. This outer list is called as main list, okay? That's why my logic is I'm gonna get every input as a single list. I'm gonna extend that list to the main list, okay? That's it. Okay, I'll tell you how it looks like. So that's a def add, and one once the user is pressed uh, def add, I'll say I'll declare one more list. That's my temporary list actually. You know, if once the user is pressed the add button, okay, when it will be pressed, you know, I'll tell you what. I'll just return nothing and I'll execute this so that you get an idea. Fine. Yeah, I think uh, you know when, when the add button will be pressed. You know, I'll mention the name. So Jeff, then uh, sorry, 9, uh, 25, then uh, contact number something like this. Then once the user press the add button, once the user press the add button, uh, data should be uh, got as input. G data uh, from the entry field should be got as input, right? So you know, according to our discussion, it should go as a list, right? So I'll say inside the list, I'll, I'm gonna get the inputs, right? So name dot get you know that's right so it should get something from the uh, you know it should get something from the name entry field so you have the name entry field here that's Sujit and that will get something from that okay and uh, again I'll say uh, age dot get that will be your second element and I'll say you know uh, contact dot get that will be your third element right in, in the list fine so this LST now refers to this particular list alone right and I'm gonna add that list to the main list that means that means I am my whole list okay I hope you understand right fine so now this will have Sujit 19 and some number that's exactly this okay once I uh, once I press clear and if I enter the other data this list will contain uh, second data okay and every time I have to uh, add this data I have to add this data to the main list okay so that it will not be deleted okay Fine. I, for that I have to uh, say main list right dot you have a method called extend in Python you should know that uh, extend or I'll say append append will be better so append lst right okay let me print the data let me uh, check how it looks like okay let me print the data here fine for our better understanding print list okay First, let us print the temporary list for each entry. For each entry, let us print the temporary list and uh, print. Okay, I'll say I'll create one more new line. I'll say print main list. Find LST, right? Fine. So main list dot append dot LST. It should work. I hope. Okay, that's it. I hope I nothing else. I have called the command. That's it. Again, we have not yet created the CSV file yet. We'll do that. No worries. I just want you to understand each and every you know word that I am doing here. That's it. You know, ah, uh, so just nineteen. That's it. Okay. Then I'll say add main list is not defined uh, uh, let's check and let's check main 
some of yeah we have given main list here that is main lst sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry think, uh, yeah guys it's, it's there project 1923 add. i think it is added but i don't know why it is getting printed why it is not getting printed i hope uh list is also specific to the particular function i hope so yeah lst is specific to the function right? so print here I'll have uh, one more data say mask. I'll have page 23 and also I'll say number one, don't worry. Add pressing that. I don't know why it's not working. So add command add, it goes to add, and it, uh, yeah, it's getting the input and it's appending the input to main list. So let us try to pin main list, okay. Yeah, list is not defined because it is not defined in outer outer the outer block. Again, it is list is specific to add. Okay, list is particular to add block. It is not defined outer the add block. So if you try to access LST outer the add block, it will throw you an error. Okay, fine. Okay, you can see we, in the main list we got three out the inputs okay because we have given Sujit two times it seems so Sujit and uh, mask okay we got all the all the data in a separate list that works fine and again this will give the current object that is current entry we are doing that is lst so current entry and we are you know we are appending we are adding the current entry to our main list and that is our exact final main list okay we are adding at each instant we are pressing the add button we are adding each entry to our main list okay okay so that's why it uh, yeah, i have written appending so it returns nothing that's why i return say return Thing. so that's it i hope and uh, i have appended the main list i think i should uh, okay that will work no problem so main list that's it let me I, I have to have one more function called as save okay that's it uh, we have got the input we we know now how to go, get the inputs and uh, store it in the main list so after doing all this we have stored it in the main list we have to write that to a file that's it once user press the save button, it should uh, it should be saved in a file. That's it. Uh, for that, for that, let me open the file. I'll use a width block here. We know what is width block, right? As soon as the file is open, this should be executed, right? So width open. Uh, I'll say my file name would be my data entry. That's my file name, data entry .csv. Again, change the file name if you are using this program. So CSV and i don't know the mode of operation is writing as file it's actually uh, saying file equal to in the, in the previous program we say that file equal to open something like that so actually the same thing but you know you should provide everything in this with block okay so if you provide that uh, it will be executed as long as the file is open super right as long as the file is open it will be executed fine yeah after that yeah, I think I have to write my uh, header first. That means my row header first. That, the, for that, I'll say I'll create an object of writer. So writer, you know how to create an object of writer, right? So writer, you have seen this before. They call guys writer. Uh, I, I have to pass my file here. So file, what we have done before. Okay, this statement. Okay, so writer. So writer again, you have to use one method. So I'll write row. That's it. So first of all. Let me uh, write row uh, my topic rows that is name, age, comma separated, age, then contact in a list. Okay, in a list, you have to pass the topic rows first. I have a pass for that, I hope. Fine. After that, after that, I have to, uh, I have now I have my main list which contains all the data okay just i have to write the rows that's it i have a lot of uh, uh, list here a lot of nested list in, a lot of uh, small list inside a, a big list so i have to uh, in, you know imply every small list as a row right so i have to uh, use a method called as write rows okay not write row it is write rows i i'm going to write multiple rows because each data should be a single row right that's why uh, i'll just pass the main list that's it it will do for me it's very simple guys that's it okay a very simple project to be honest right so i'll say it is a 
command I'll say I'll call the save function this should work I hope let's check uh, clear yeah I've mentioned all the patterns yeah I think it should work exit is that run and all I'll say name so just 19 contact that's it I'll say add it will be added uh, but that a message should be printed right a message should be printed that the particular data is added but then only you know that right I'll print the message in a while don't worry so 21 and uh, uh, let's let have the same number add mask add John add LC and that's it every uh, adding everything you press the save button okay exit uh, i will print a message right if you press the save button it has been saved successfully you print something like that wait please okay and you can again use if you are good in exception handling you can use try and catch to uh, print the error also okay that's also fine but i'm just gi giving the gist of this project you can develop it uh, as long as you want you can also use speech recognition model in python to uh, uh, get the data but that is slow okay actually i've tried, I've tried that that uh, you know that seems to be very slow okay okay when i say speech recognition it should recognize my name age and contact i'm saying and I, that that will do for me but it's typically slow okay something mm, hanged i hope close the program okay I think now it should uh, it should have entered the data in our file say data entry uh, let me go to open the file I'm gonna go to this you got a file here data entry open let this be opening I don't use Excel much, that's it. Okay, you can see we got all the data. So just 19, 214, Kumar, 21, like that. Yeah, sounds good, right? So it enters all the data in the in a CSV file. That's it. And you can see we got some empty rows inside. That's just a separation between one row and another. No, you can delete that whatever. Okay. And it will be, I think it will be uh, not coming when you're using uh, no further versions of Excel. I'm using 2007. That's it. Okay. That's why it's coming. You can see we all the uh, we got all the data. Fine. So that's how our project works. I hope I made you clear. Okay, let me quickly recap what I have done. Okay, so I have done some buttons, name, uh, buttons, entry fields, and clear exit and all. Okay, that's fine. I have packed that in my screen, and after that, I just got the every entry as a single list, and I and I've nested all the list. I've listed all the list in a main list. Okay. And each time my user is entering something that will be uh, getting in a separate list and I'm not printing the list, sorry, uh, separate list and that list will be appended to the main list. So each time a list will be appended to the main list. That means uh, it will be added consecutively. Each time the user is pressing something that will be uh, getting as a single list and that will be appended to the main list. And after that, I, uh, once the user is pressing the save button, I uh, will create a file and they will write all the rows. That is main list should be written as all the rows. That's it. I hope it's clear my logic is clear right you got all the uh, four rows here because we are trying to try to print the main list that's why fine after that I told you I hello oh, yeah it's working <laughs> sorry I told you I'll I'll be getting you an error message right for that uh, you have to import something called as message box. that's very simple guys I'll tell you. Import message box fine from TK, TK inter import message box, you know how to import that. So, add button. Uh, let me print here. So, I'll use message box object. I can directly use message box, not a I think it will work. I don't know. Let's see. Show info. That means it will show your info. Uh, I have to pass the text, right? I have to pass the title and the text, okay? My title will be information. Okay, I hope somewhat remember I used it uh, a month ago okay so information and uh, uh, the file has been saved successfully yeah so now if you press the add button this will be uh, printed I hope so let's restart the run 
I think I have to create an object of missing so no no I, I'm not sure let's take fine so so just 22 something press add you can see we got the message box super bright and title is information and uh, 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 the you know the info is file has been saved I can give anything right press ok that will go right and also if you press save and uh, that should be uh, uh, something should be saved right so you can go and uh, you can use save here okay message box dot show info give the title save uh, or, or you can also get some uh, uh, prompt from the user. confirm uh, also from the user show confirm i think uh, that's, a, that's a methods available show confirm i hope that is that will confirm the user uh, that will give yes or no uh, are you sure want to save the file like kind of stuff uh, I'll just close this okay it will ask me yeah do you want to close all the tabs it will ask me two options right if i press close all it will close other way cancel it will get back you, you can also use this in message box go to message box documentation to see this okay fine i hope you understand but i am just showing the information here so save the success i'll just pass uh, the title title should be remember you have to pass two arguments one is your title that is your uh, header then uh, your uh, actual information right again this is also information you can give any title that's your wish say time being time is running up so i'll say information then i'll say uh, save it successfully that's it your file has been i think it is uh, now your it is added i hope the data has been added i'm sorry i, I made a mistake has been added successfully here save successfully Score check clear right. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's very advisable to use a try catch exception. Try uh, then cast exception print an error message. You can also print error message. Maybe I'll tell you that in some other course. And the add data has been added successfully. Save that permission they need uh, i mean i uh, open the data entry file so yeah, if you are opening the file uh, then that will not be printed so uh, uh, you know close that file then only it will be uh, so it says permission they need because my operating system is actually using that file you can't write anything into the file when i'm using the file right <laughs> fine okay fine so that's why it says permission they need not a problem so for uh, at these uh, you know at this point of time you have to use try catch exceptions right so when you say try and uh, instead of printing something here an error message should be printed here right uh, my, my message box should come showing uh, an error has occurred that's why okay that's how it should show for that you can go here and you can write uh, try catch here try catch exceptions here that will be making sense yeah you can write here try okay i'll just copy this uh, yeah i'll just cut this Yeah. I think I have to put everything in a try block, right? You have to put everything in a try block. Yeah, you can do try block and you can also. Uh, I'm not doing the time being, so I can also use message box dot show error. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how it looks like. Okay, try guys yeah, because time being I'm not doing that. I am restricted to hours. I'm sorry. Message dot message box dot. I have to tell one more topic. That's it. Show error. An error has occurred so let's check how it looks like okay this is not at all related, related to our uh, you know project this is something separate i'm doing i'm just execute this alone i think something should be executed now i'll just close this execute this alone yeah it shows an error has occurred but uh unfortunately uh we have to give the uh, title right because then this will be taken as title okay so title would be error i'll say oops okay oops yeah oh let me call say okay yeah 
oops and uh, an error has occurred also it will give you a specific sound okay uh, you can say it okay oops and error has occurred that's why it shows uh, error message right we can have a logo of error message there and that will work perfectly no notes i'll comment this statement that's it that's how our data entry project works okay getting the data storing it in the csv file and using the csv file later Sounds good, right? And you can develop more in this. You can use more option. You can make the uh, GUI attractive. And that is up to you. You can go and study your uh, documentation and develop more on this. I'll leave this uh, no notebook for you, right? Fine. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for attending the session. Hope, yeah, it's time. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for attending the session. And also, uh, you can also you know uh, pass arguments to the function using Lambda. Okay. I think it's, it's high time, but uh, I don't know. Okay, let me tell how to get function safe. For example, we have uh, same button. We have the same button. Just just comment, right? We have the same button here. For example, I'll say and instead of calling only the function, you can pass argument to the function. Uh, maybe I'll show you my uh, my work. Okay, just a simple try. Okay, simple. Just a simple try. The calculator will be there. It's recording. Let's wait for a while. Yeah, you see, we we have ten buttons actually. We here because this is a calculator. You should have uh, one ten buttons. Uh, okay. uh, you should have ten buttons, and here I am pressing the command, and I, when I press the command. You know, I should inform the function that I am pressing button number one, right? So I have to pass one as the input. For that, I am passing it in lambda. So that's how we have to pass. Okay, just press lambda colon number one. That's it. It will pass something in your function. Okay, understood that, right? So you can get that as input. Okay, uh, understand that in our uh, data entry projects or project, we have not, you know, we have not got anything as the input. Okay, as the argument actually function argument, we have not got anything and we have not passed anything to the function. We have only the functions here. See command. Okay, but he. Uh, here we have to pass some numbers so that I used uh, lambda. We can also use that lambda colon, you know, function name, then pass something that will work. Okay, lambda colon function name. I mean, uh, uh, if you want to pass something to save function, here if you want to pass something to save function, you have to use uh, lambda, you know, lambda functions in Python. I hope you know. Uh, put a space and here you have to pass something. Say, it take, if it takes two arguments, you can pass two arguments here. That's it. Uh, that will be, that will be passed when you click this button. Okay, fine. That's how we can pass. And if you are passing two arguments here, you can get the arguments there here, and you can do your calculations. That's that's how it works. Okay, that's how it works. I hope you understand. Thank you guys. Thank you for attending the session. Again, okay. and we have I have uh, three more courses in uh, fundamentals of JavaScript, uh, module one and module two. That we talk talk about the basics first, then. Some intermediate content uh, in the second course, and we have a premier co premium course on uh, Java that will contain the complete Java understanding everything in Java. Okay, every, every single word in Java from I uh, you know from scratch to advanced. You can also take that also. You can also take that and uh, get a certificate for complete Java programmer. Thank you again. Uh, in Java, we'll talk about everything in object-oriented programming and so and so. And uh, more courses are Stay tuned. Thank you.